Good afternoon, everyone, and warmly welcome to this press conference. We start with short statements with the Finnish and Czech Prime Ministers, and then we have time for a few questions. So, Prime, Prime Minister Sipila, please. Thank you, dear Andre. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to thank Andre for the good and fruitful negotiations uh, we had had today. We started uh, from the business seminar in the morning. We had uh, uh, four sectors, uh, uh, transport, health, energy, and uh, cycler economy uh, we discussed in, in the morning. Uh, here in Kesaranta, we continued negotiations uh, uh, mainly in, in European issues. Uh, we all all know that uh, we truly have those issues on the table uh, during the uh, uh, next few weeks and month, months. Uh, first, we discussed about uh, uh, European Union multi-annual budget. We, we have a lot of common interest there, a strong uh, ag agriculture and cohesion policy and a stronger approach uh, for digitalization, innovations and uh, growth. We both have uh, been active also in European Union defense policy and noted positively uh, budget uh, resources for that. In the next European Council at uh, EMU and European Union migration policy will be the central questions we need to go further uh, with these uh, policies and improve them. We had a very good discussion also with that respect. I used this meeting also um, uh, for a uh, possibility to tell uh, my colleague ideas and plans for Finnish EU presidency. Uh, after, after one year, it will be a very challenging time because uh, we will have uh, European Union elections, uh, Finnish uh, parliamentary elections, uh, Commission will change, we have open uh, multi-annual multi budget and um, also the Brexit negotiation for the future relationship. Uh, <coughs> uh, we will uh, uh, rise up the issue about, about the single market, especially uh, digital single market. Uh, around uh, our our presidency last but not least uh, it was an honor that czech republic uh, uh, joined also to our uh, hybrid center here in in helsinki uh, the work ha uh, at the center has started very well and actively it's great pressure to get czech republic also on the board uh, we have uh, a very good relation, uh, relations uh, between our countries. Uh, let's continue on that good cooperation in, in politics and also in business. Once again, thank you, Andre, uh, for coming here in, in Helsinki. So, uh, thank you, Juha. It was a big pleasure and honor to be with you here, and, and uh, thank you very much for your war welcome and hospitabil uh, hospitality during uh, my visit uh, of Finland. So um, I think uh, we have a very good understanding. We have the same business background. So uh, I think uh, we have a lot of uh, same uh, views and ideas. So uh, I am glad to say that the bilateral relation between the Czech Republic and Finland are very good and without any unsettled issues. We are also close partners within the European Union. We are in ALDE together, mm -hmm. where we very often share similar views. Uh, that is why I see a big potential for broadening our cooperation in certain topics uh, of the EU agenda. So naturally, today we mainly discuss about the European issues, uh, in the upcoming months, uh, the EU will deal with a number of uh, key topics important for e EU for the future, like uh, migration or new new budget and uh, or Brexit. Uh, so um, we had a detailed debate about the reform of the common European asylum system. Uh, for Czech Republic, it's a very important issue. 
So uh, I'm glad that we both agreed that uh, we want uh, both stronger and functioning asylum system resilient to the any potential future crisis. Uh, consensus and unity of the EU are essential and for us quota are not the way forward. Our objective must be helping those who are in need, uh, stopping misuse of the asylum system and taking the full control of our borders, <coughs> of European borders. <coughs> we also discussed the future of EU budget and uh, the so-called multi-year financial framework and uh, as it will be the subject of negotiation during upcoming months. And for us, it's also very important that we have much more influence on it uh, like uh, in, uh, in the past. Of course, it is important how much money will be in the budget and how it will be distributed into different chapters. For us, it is of utmost importance that the member state have possibility to decide on its allocation focus areas and investment priorities. I'm also pleased that Czech Republic became today the 16th member state of the Center of Excellence for Countering Hybrid Threats uh, in Helsinki. Finland is European leader country in the field of uh, hybrid threats. And this is why I believe this cooperation will be an important asset for Czech Republic and our security experts. Last but not least, we also talked with Prime Minister about the economic ties between Finland and Czech Republic. And we both think uh, there is a still high potential for more intensive cooperation. Uh, I was attended by Czech and Finnish companies and other relevant partners from the sector of energy, transport, health and circular <coughs> economy. And I value a lot the fact that Prime Minister Sipila opened this business oriented even even together with me. Finland is our important trading partner. The trade turnover has been steadily rising since 2014, and I believe that we boosted this trend today. Mm -hmm. Part of our discussion was focused also on education. Finnish education system and educational policy have excellent results and reacts well to recent economic and social challenges could be a source of inspiration for the Czech Republic where we want to really make a, a real uh, reform of our education system. And this system is also uh, inspiration and example in effective use of digital technologies in schools or in professional training of teachers and teaching methods. I'm glad I could share views on this topic in this morning with representative of Alto University. Our talks also touch our cooperation, a regional grouping, it means the V4, we should go group and the Nordic and Baltic countries. And uh, we have discussed that um, uh, we will, uh, I will propose to my colleagues in V4 that we can meet together, V4 and, 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 the, and the Baltic uh, states. And, and the least that uh, I was, uh, I, I have a pleasure to, to invite you Juha, to Prague. I will be you there. told me you never visited <laughs> Prague, <laughs> so we are looking forward uh, for your visit and with your uh, business delegation, and it will be a big honor for us uh, when you come to visit us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Prime Minister. So now <coughs> we take a few questions. So we start with the Czech TV. Okay, uh, please use mic. Martin Donash, Czech Television. I have questions on uh, both excellencies, if, I'm, if I may first, Prime Minister Sipila. Your country has already become famous for its ability to counter the so-called hybrid threats, disinformation campaigns. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the best practice, the general advice that you can give any country, including Czech Republic? Mm -hmm. And Prime Minister Babish, it is no secret that you want to be inspired by the successes of Finnish educational system. What uh, practices do you think that we can overtake in near future? And of course, I don't mean just paying our teachers better than we do in the moment. Mm. If I can uh, mention only one thing, I think that that's, uh, that's the, the whole of society approach we have, uh, have in Finland. Uh, government is working with the private sector, including uh, media also, uh, when we, we tackle the hybrid threats uh, in, in Finland. Uh, we are also mapping uh, weaknesses our system uh, on on regular basis and uh, change our regulation if there is there is a need for for that. 
Concerning the education system in, in Finland, which is of course very famous, so we have a very nice discussion, an interesting discussion in Alto University. So in Finland there was a reform of education system. Alto University is, is a merger between three universities. And uh, what is interesting in Finland, there is uh, no, uh, so they have actually 14 universities and they are going to decrease it and there is no uh, university where the students are paying for the education. So even that Finland has two, two private, so it's, uh, it's quite interesting. And of course, uh, they concentrate on, uh, there is a very, uh, very link to the, to the business because uh, this uh, discussion in Alto University, the, the representation of, of business uh, was present, so very, very linked. And of course, uh, they try to make uh, orientation of studies um, oriented on the, on, the, on the business needs. But generally, Finland has the same problem like we have, that there, there are no, no enough let's say, workers and professions. And, uh, and uh, I'm, after the press conference, we are going to visit some primary school. And, uh, and there is also very interesting that uh, practically the, um, the education is, is very free. There is practically no inspectorate. There is no so much influence or regulation of the state. And, and, uh, and I heard from our ambassador, there was somebody uh, which uh, came to Finland to, to make like such a study on education. So I'm going to meet him uh, when I will be in Prague. And uh, of course, I ask uh, also you um, and, and colleagues, uh, maybe they can send us somebody to make some evaluation of our system and to advise us how to how to improve it because it's a big issue. It's uh, but it's not only about money that we want to increase the salaries, but uh, uh, what is interesting in Finland that uh, that the profession of, of teacher is so so um, uh, respected and 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 popular that only one of ten interested students uh, can become uh, a teacher. So there are a lot of things that, that we can we can learn here and. Uh, and also uh, Alto University is also uh, ranking among the best universities in, in the world. So, uh, so very, very important for us. Mm -hmm. If I may add, we discuss about, about this issue. And, uh, and I think that the main thing is that we have the best teachers in, in the world. And, uh, and this is uh, mainly why, uh, my, why the, the profession of the teacher, teachers uh, so, so highly respected in, in Finland. And I think that this is one of the core things in, in, uh, in our system. Um, then we have time for another question. Now it's the Finnish side, so MTV3 News. Okay. I'm Aina Huileja, MTV News Finland. This is for both of you. Um, as we all know, it's very likely that the refugee crisis isn't over and in the coming years more and more people will be coming to Europe from sub-Saharan countries, for example. And, and as you just told, uh, Czech Re Republic is one of the countries who opposes this so-called burden sharing with quotas. And as for Finland, we are the one of the few countries who has been taking people inside there and rel relocate people inside the European Union. What do you think? Is this a fair deal for both of you, for both of <laughs> us? Uh, and uh, and um, if this is not working, so what is the solution then? Mm. Do you want to start? Okay. Maybe it's better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, it's the right question, but uh, we have uh, uh, to help these people outside of, of Europe. We have to help them uh, in the countries where they were born. If we have today 5 million refugees waiting in Turkey, Lebanon or Jordan to go back, the question is what uh, made Europe in, in diplomacy and activity to have uh, influence on Syria, to, to, to engage Europe uh, to have a peace in Syria, to make a Marshall Plan of Syria, the, the country is completely destroyed and, and uh, we have to reconstruct the country. And, uh, and Europe was passive and left this area under the influence of Iran, Turkey and Russia today. So there were so many speeches, uh, Assad must go, uh, and what was, the, what was the delivery of Europe? 
We have a lot of models in the world uh, for migration. Ellis Island, uh, Canada, Green Card, Australia. And, uh, and if the smugglers made 6 billion euro in 2016, according to the uh, Europol numbers, we have to fight against these people. We have to stop this and we have to help them in their respective countries. So we are doing this. We are giving money, we are sending uh, policemen, we are sending soldiers, but uh, we cannot uh, save the planet. We, we can, because uh, we were celebrating now the second uh, end of the Second World War, okay? And the allies against Nazi after the Second World War, they, they said we will create United Nations. And United Nations will fight against the for peace and against the poverty and against uh, and will help the people and and how is this functioning today the security council of, of UN and the big nations they should take a responsibility for this what they promised before and uh, and uh, of course uh, uh, migration is a big issue in Europe and uh, and and the quota system which was invaded by commission in 2014 is not working it's dividing Europe and it's it's bad. So we are uh, ready to be solidar, but uh, on the other hand, if we have the lowest unemployment rate in Europe and the nurse is waiting one year to get the permit to work in Czech hospital and she need the ID and passport and it's uh, one Schengen, the second Schengen is not working. So we have to think about the, the security of Europe and, and really to help these people outside Europe, to make a hotspot outside. And, and, um, and of course, we, we, we have to be active and we have to be uh, pushing uh, these all players like United States, Russia. Look, look, at, look at Syria today. Iran, Turkey and Russia is there. And, and, and Europe... Uh, according to my opinion, didn't make uh, enough uh, uh, to solve this problem outside, outside Europe. And it should be so. And, and look at the countries, how they are changing. Look at Austrian uh, election. I have been in, on Friday in Vienna. Sebastian Kurz uh, uh, won practically this, uh, this. And look at Italy, what is, what is going on in Italy, where the league is, is saying that, that they want to return 600,000 migrants by home. <coughs> And so on, and it's a problem, and uh, and situation change, and and to insist on these quotas, uh, which is for us unacceptable, because we say we will decide uh, who will work and live in our country. Nobody from the Commission or other member state, and we are ready to be and to help, but in different kind, not not uh, accepting uh, the, the the quotas. Yes, this is. Not an easy question. Uh, we have shared our comprehens comprehensive uh, approach to migration management uh, with with our colleagues in in European Union. Uh, I think that we all share that uh, we have to tackle the root causes, and uh, and we have invested in in European Union for that. We need need uh, resettlement. We need ex external border management, and uh, I I think that these areas are. Uh, quite clear for all of us also. Uh, we need to do something to our Schengen system uh, and uh, return policy, and we need uh, to, to find a solution for the solidarity and responsibility in exceptional uh, circumstances like we, we had. Uh, what is the, the final system for that? We have proposed that it's, it's voluntary basis system uh, as it has been until now, and, and uh, we have taken uh, our, our responsibility in, in that respect also. We have done what we have agreed. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. I think it's time to end this press conference today. Thank you. Thank you.